September 18th, 2019 was a dark day for law practitioners all over the world. Dirk Viersum, who was representing a state witness in court, was brutally killed in front of his house in broad daylight. He was shot 10 times in his head, arms and legs. So what was the reason behind this merciless murder? Who could be so heartless as to snatch the life out of an innocent man? Stay tuned. There is a pretty huge backstory behind the murder of Dirk Viersum. It all boils down to the heartless crimes committed by the Mokro Mafia. The Netherlands is a country known for its liberal drug policies. Although organised crime has been going on within the country, a series of shocking murders revealed just how serious the problem actually was. Nabil B was a young man of Moroccan descent. Throughout his youth, he dabbled in petty crimes and selling weed. But he had big ambitions and wanted to make a lot of money. It was at that time that he became acquainted with Ridwan Tahi. They quickly formed a connection because of their shared Moroccan heritage and interests. Tahi would go on to become one of the biggest Dutch gangsters and make a fortune from smuggling drugs across Europe. This gangster took an instant liking to Nabil and started giving him small jobs. Nabil was at the bottom of Tahi's criminal organisation and was mostly in charge of arranging getaway cars and collecting information about rival gang members which would be passed on to the professional assassins within the gang. Nabil was also close friends with Tahi's right-hand man, Saeed Razuki. Although illegal, life was going pretty well for Nabil. He was making a lot of money and making great connections, but that was until a tragedy struck the gang. In December 2016, Nabil was assigned to collect information about someone who was suspected of leaking information to a rival cartel. If there is something that gang leaders hate, it is betrayal. Leaking confidential information to rivals was the highest degree of betrayal, and Tahi was not a kind man, so he instructed his gang members to wipe him off the face of the earth. Two trained professional killers from the gang drove into the guy's apartment complex and fired multiple shots at him. After completing the crime, they drove away in a getaway car that Nabil had arranged, but the next day the gang realised their horrible mistake. Instead of killing the intended target, the shots were fired at Hakim Changashi. Hakim was a pretty important person because he was the direct descendant of the Changashi family, which had connections to other major gangs, so killing him was a suicide mission for the gang. For the rest of the gang, this murder was a case of mistaken identity. But for Nabil, it was personal because Changashi had been a childhood friend of his and he was also quite close with the Changashi family too. Soon the Changashis learned of Nabil's involvement in Hakim's murder. As expected, they were furious. When Tahi learned about this, he instructed Nabil to blame the killing on a rival gang. So that is exactly what Nabil did. But his conscience couldn't bear lying to his friend's family. He couldn't live with the guilt of being involved in Hakim's murder, so he told one of Changashi's relatives that the murder had been ordered by Tahi. Nabil was a pretty smart man. He knew that he was going to get killed by the Changashis or by Tahi himself, so he took the safest option and called a police station in central Amsterdam and offered himself up as a witness. As expected, all hell broke loose. The gang came to know about this, and Tahi was furious that one of his own men had betrayed him. They soon put Nabil on their hit list. Nabil confessed to the police about his crimes, so he was arrested for the prohibited possession of weapons and his involvement in the murder of Hakim Changashi. He also let the police know that he had witnessed 13 murders, several of which he helped arrange. This put Tahi and the rest of the gang on the list of the most wanted criminals. The police were on the lookout for these men, just a week after the announcement of Nabil B being a state witness. His brother, Ridwan B, was killed. Of course, the rumours were all that the gang under Tahi's leadership was in charge of this murder. This sent a clear sign that if anyone was to help Nabil, they wouldn't live to see the next day. Dirk Viersum started as the lawyer of Nabil B in the case against the Mokro Mafia. The trial of this gang was called the Marengo trial. The name of the trial was picked at random by a computer and is related to a fabric named Marengo. There are 17 suspects involved in the trial for their involvement in several murders and attempted murders. So on the morning of September 18th, 2019, Dirk Viersum left his home in the Dutch neighbourhood of Butenveldert to go to work by car. As soon as he stepped into his car, a hoodie wearing man dressed in black appeared on the driver's side of the car. This man tried to shoot twice at this lawyer, but the weapon faltered. Viersum tried to run after him. According to a witness who stood about 15 metres away from the murder, heated words were exchanged between the two. The witness heard Viersum say words like piss off and god damn it. A while later, the shooter shot again at Wiersum. This time, he managed to hit the lawyer 10 times in the head, neck and upper body. In a matter of seconds, Dirk took his last breath. The shooter fled the scene and escaped in a white Opel combo. A second person was waiting in the getaway car. The whole of the Netherlands was shocked by this incident. Police Chief Erik Akaboom said, With this brutal murder, a new limit has been crossed. 
Now even people doing simply their work no longer seem safe. It has become obvious that organised crime within the country is getting out of hand. The murder of a lawyer who was defending a state witness was certainly against the rule of law and a brutal crime against humanity. The Dutch Prime Minister and Legal Affairs Minister offered their condolences. Dirk was often described as a passionate lawyer who has always stood by what he believed in. So everyone was shocked at the murder of this innocent man. Amsterdam Mayor Femke Helsema called an emergency meeting and let the officers know the importance of this case. So according to the witness's description of the shooter, the police described the suspect. They were looking for a man between 20 and 25 years with a slender build. He was about 1.75 meters tall and was dressed in dark clothes. Because the man wore a hoodie, no information about his skin color is known. After a bit of digging and investigation, the police arrested those who were behind the brutal crime. They were Moreno B and Guillermo Brown. The court also found them guilty. So both men were sentenced to serve a minimum term of 28 years in prison. Since Viersum's murder, a total of 20 to 30 people closely related to the Tahi case have received extra security. This also includes judges and prosecutors. The level of protection varied depending on the significance of their role in the case. Security cameras were installed and there was a police presence in the neighbourhood. People who are closely linked to the case were given personal security by the Royal and Diplomatic Protection Service. This is the same service that offers protection for members of the Dutch royal family. The lawyer who succeeded Dirk Veersum as a lawyer for Nabil wanted to remain anonymous for his safety. We can't really blame him for that, but he withdrew soon after as he was not satisfied with the safety measures provided by the state. Later on, Nabil got two new lawyers. Both of them wanted to remain anonymous. However, Tahi's lawyer was against keeping the new lawyers anonymous. Soon both of them withdrew too. It looks like no one is ready to take the risk. Peter Shouten became the new lawyer for the state witness. Ono de Jong was appointed as Nabil's second lawyer. The crime reporter, Peter Arde Vries, took charge of the confidential counsellor and spokesman for Nabil and his family, but later on it was revealed that both lawyers were on a death list because of their involvement in the Marengo process. Although both lawyers continued with their work, the gravity of the situation became obvious last year. As the days go by, these gangsters are becoming more ruthless and relentless. The lives of Nabil and everyone associated with him are in danger. It is a pity that the crimes in the Netherlands have gotten so out of hand. What can be done about this? What are your thoughts on the brutal murders that happened in association with the Marengo trial? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share if you love the content in this video. We'll be back soon with brand new videos. Until then, goodbye.